we take into account the balance of programmatic uh, traffic coming in uh, from through all the SSPs and DSPs that they're working with. So here, top uh, thing that advertisers shall be concerned: brand marketers and media agencies are affected by bot traffic uh, a lot, and uh, currently the one and the best solution for this case would be to uh, use those LBH metrics and trying to determine bots not by uh, just ad load, uh, page load or the behavior but also by all those different metrics such as ad loaded and viewability. So the question is, is that a new market? We, um, the ad block itself has appeared in where? 2013, 12? But uh, it right now is a big deal. And um, the bots, if you remember, there have been an incentivized network who incentivized clicks or conversions and paid customers for that. But that all died just because it's much easier to do that with bots. You don't have to pay bots for the traffic. They do all this stuff for free, right? Um, next, um, there are all obvious lots of different um, people or bodies in the uh, supply chain affected in a different way by the fraud traffic. From the perspective of the benefit of different parties in the supply chain, we cannot say that uh, the ad fraud is absolutely uh, negative or absolutely positive uh, thing to be. For, for the supplier, that is publisher, and for another endpoint, that is advertiser, ad fraud is obviously a cash out and the reason why they are losing money and probably <clears throat> sometimes losing their business. But for, let's say, Ad network. We have seen that ad fraud could um, fulfill the campaign budgeting by the end of the flight date, flight the flight period campaign. We, it's obvi also obvious that the more is the share of the bot fraud traffic within the ad network, the more the revenue of that ad, ad network. Then we have uh, the DMP. DMP would use custom segments to display your advertising to a certain type of audience. So that's also obvious that the more will be uh, the more uh, the wider second audience second they will provide you, the more will be their revenue, right? So why don't increase that audience segment by bots by ad fraud that will steal cookies? I will pretend to be a part of that segment and they're definitely affected by that next and well that all won't be that bad if we won't have such guys as internal ad science forensic and all the other up here there are huge businesses built on the ad fraud and as you may know businesses will not give up that easily by just uh, to, well, by just giving up the market that they're working on. So that means that uh, the ad fraud has some uh, very strong parties to be advocates for itself. And now with the ad blocking. Ad blocking do does uh, an awful stuff for pub publishers. It makes it the re reason why there is lots of cash out on for the advertisers. Um, but it definitely does a good job for ad networks and for uh, the programmatic DSPs. Um, so, yes, we have, um, that will be probably the very last slide uh, page of my presentation over here. Um, that's uh, for me and Dallas personally, that been uh, that has been uh, uh, 
there has been a huge thing to happen to this understanding of the whole figure, how this all affects us and what is going on with the ad fraud. Because previously, uh, personally, me, uh, I did not think about the death of Netflix and how the market is evolving. We have uh, basically uh, CPI, PPI, and all traffic are the incentivized traffic that is closely connected to uh, the ad fraud generation. And uh, the ad fraud generation will be basically another advocate for the incentivized traffic, such as POPs and PPI and CPI. That means, um, and there, will, there are definitely lots of different companies who are willing to make money on that side of business as well. The ad fraud is definitely a market. And it is a market where the huge businesses evolve and make uh, huge revenues. And uh, that means that in case we will go to the internal ad science, or to DMP, or to any other network, they will basically uh, enter, they will basically provide us with a server that will um, filter away some portion of bots, or all of them. But this would also increase the cost of our inventory. The, the major challenge here from this in this situation is to get rid of the bots and at the same time uh, maintain the uh, CPM that will allow the media channel to exist. Um, um, I appreciate, uh, we will appreciate any uh, suggestions and any thoughts on this topic. Um, I hope you all have noted, uh, made some notes in your notebooks or uh, any kind of devices or, uh, where you can us write your thoughts and then tell it to us. Um, currently it is 3 p.m. so we are one, 30 minutes over time. <laughs> no time for Q&A session, but we have um, the Zio, Zio Adops um, Facebook uh, group and Facebook at work where uh, this all questions are evolving and where we uh, we will be more than happy to discuss all the thoughts that you may have about adblock and resolving this um, uh, threat uh, together. I will send you um, this presentation um, that I've been shown to you uh, over email um, to, and I will also upload it to the, uh, the AdOps group in Facebook at work. Um, I will also create uh, some kind of a brief overview of the presentation with the major um, key points so you can look through that notes as well uh, and I will provide you uh, later on with the uh, interesting information such as uh, IP full year revenue reports, the case study from the Digital Audience Alliance, uh, Digital Citizens Alliance, I'm sorry, and other uh, companies that are here in the market to solve this problem. Uh, All together, this knowledge combined could bring us to understanding how we can uh, cope with that. Переходя на на русский, у нас очевидным зоной развития для макипер, по крайней мере, это огромный продукт сам по себе. Я думаю, для ценных продуктов также является программатик. Ввиду существующих на данный момент тенденций на рынке, программатик будет становиться более, более активным и более популяр способом продвижения продуктов. И этот рынок очень сильно, как мы видели, на него очень сильно влияет AdFraud. То есть мы сейчас находимся на заре перехода по сути, к программе медиабайна. Это абсолютно другой способ мышления, это абсолютно другой способ медиабайна. Если э, мы э, сейчас начнем сразу э, параллельно думать о том, каким образом э, работать с Эдфродом, то, возможно, мы также успеем купить программатик э, impressions, э, которые не будут э, показывать тенденцию, которые показали 
Appnexus в своей, после того, как они почистили ботов. Иными словами, если мы найдем способ фильтровать ботов до того, как на рынок выйдет entity, который сможет делать сертификацию трафика, и это, естественно, увеличит стоимость закупаемого трафика, мы еще сможем сэкономить какой-то себе, сделать какой-то экстра маджин и сделать какую-то подушку для того, чтобы войти в новый этап, когда появится такая компания. Такая компания уже есть. Это ТЭК, крупный альянс объединения ведущих CEO и ведущих умов Programmatic Advertising. И этот недавно совершенно, в июне или в мае, они сообщили о том, что они начинают программу, запускают по сертификации качества трафика. То есть не будем даваться подробности о правдоподобности сертификации, кто будет контролировать тех, кто контролирует, но это в любом случае увеличит стоимость закупаемого трафика. Это в любом случае влияет на работу этого рынка. Тут очень много компаний, которые в этом заинтересованы, в самом фронте это в том числе. Так что, когда он начнет исчезать, они также будут стремиться сохранить свои прибыли и свой кэшфлоу на том уровне, на котором он был, когда у них был фронт. Что говорит о том, что инвентарь станет дороже. В общем, я надеюсь, всем, кто дождался окончания моей презентации, было интересно. Спасибо большое за то, что вы пришли и послушали. Присоединяйтесь, пожалуйста.